Hey everyone, Teldern from Bloody Eye Games here, and today we're going to learn how to play Broadsword. If you don't already know, Broadsword is a tactical dungeon crawling adventure game. Sounds like a mouthful, but it's a whole lot of fun. Let's get started! The first thing you do is to create your character, your hero. You do that by choosing your race and class. The list of races includes Elf, Dwarf, Human, and Halfling. Each race comes with two abilities, and you need to choose one. This gives you the opportunity to give your character some character. For example, dwarves have the option of choosing between stone cunning and sturdy. Next, pair that up with a choice of one of a dozen classes from three categories. Caster classes use lots of spells but shy away from physical combat. Fighter classes do very well in melee or ranged combat but cannot use magic. Hybrid classes are best of both worlds characters, good fighters who also dabble with spells. Now that you have your character, let's get to know your stats. Your body points are a measure of your strength, stamina, and physique. Like you would expect, if this goes down to zero, you die. Don't let that happen. There are some things that key off of your body points, like encumbrance, the number of items you can carry, and weapon range limit, how far away you can hit things with weapons that have the keywords ranged or thrown in them. If body points is your physical attribute, then mind points represents, you guessed it, your mental attribute. There are a couple things that key off your mind points, namely getting stunned, when your mind points drop to zero, and the number of times per quest you can use active skills. Skills in this game are either active or passive and are similar to what other games might call feats or perks. You get them when you level up, so you don't have to worry about it starting out. Next we'll look at attack and defend dice. The game's combat resolution mechanic uses custom d6s called, not surprisingly, combat dice. We'll go over what they mean in more detail in a little bit. When you attack with combat dice, you call them attack dice. When defending, defend dice. Attack dice represents the strength of your currently equipped weapon, and defend dice is a measure of how much armor you have. Generally, the higher for both, the better. Now that you know your character, give him a name. A backstory is nice if you really want to get immersed, but it's ultimately up to you. We're finally ready to play the game. Let's go! To start the game, the GM will refer to a page like this in the quest book. The GM will then read the quest name and description to the players so the heroes know what their objective is. The GM will also let you know where you need to start on the map, as well as read the quest notes in case there is any additional information you need to know before you start. Broadsword is structured in rounds. Unlike other games where you roll for initiative which never changes for the duration of combat, in Broadsword, at the top of each round, the players themselves determine what their initiative will be, with the GM always going last. Each subsequent round, the players can rearrange their initiative, or not, however they want. This allows for dynamic gameplay. Knowing that your warrior can land a blow, then get out of the way before your pyromancer throws a fireball is pretty sweet, but might be catastrophic if the turn order were reversed. On your turn, you can move, then take an action, or take an action and then move. You cannot partially move, take an action, and then continue moving. Most of the time, your movement will be the red movement die plus 4, Shorten to 1d6 plus 4. Sometimes you may have modifiers that you add or subtract on top of this. If you do, don't forget to apply that each time you move. When moving 5 or fewer squares, no roll is required as that's the minimum that can be rolled. This is called a basic move. Moving is only allowed orthogonally, in other words, only up, down, left, and right, not diagonally. One thing to keep in mind about moving is that each hero has a 5 square radius centered around them called their vicinity. This area is what they can effectively see and uncover through the fog of war. All heroes share a cumulative vicinity, so one hero may still be able to target a monster if that monster is within another hero's vicinity. But wait, earlier I mentioned actions, what are those? Well, there are 8 types of actions. The two most common are attacking with a weapon and casting a spell. The other actions include searching for treasure, searching for secret doors, searching for traps, disarming a trap that's been discovered, using an active skill, and finally using a special action. Special actions mainly include environmental things like pulling a lever or stepping on a floor plate, but also things like double moving or swapping items. Now here's how combat works. When attacking with a melee weapon, as you would expect, you must be adjacent to the target. On the other hand, ranged weapons can be fired up to a range of your hero's maximum body points. This is the weapon range limit mentioned earlier. The faces of a combat die include three swords, two light shields, and one dark shield. Whenever you attack, you count the number of swords rolled. 
both light and dark shields count as a miss. Each dark shield the monster rolls blocks each of your swords attacked. The net result is how much damage is done. For spells, remember that each spell can only be used once per quest, but after resolving the effects of the card, you may decide to keep it to cast again later if you burn two mind points. So the heroes have finally completed their turns and now the GM is up. On the GM's turn, all monsters can attack. They are also looking to score swords to land hits against the heroes, but this time the heroes defend by rolling light shields. In this example, the zombie on the left did not manage to roll any swords. That's a miss, so the hero does not need to roll to defend. On the other hand, the goblin captain on the right attacked rolling two swords. Fortunately, the hero managed to roll two light shields, nullifying the monster's attack completely. Monsters don't have a movement die. Their movement is a set number depending on the monster. Also, most monsters will drop items after they are killed that the hero who landed the killing blow has dibs on picking up. Though some, like the zombie in this case, don't drop anything. After the GM is done, it becomes the top of the next round and the players can determine their initiative again. Play continues until the heroes achieve their objective and are victorious. Now that we've covered the basics of the game, it's time to create your character and get started playing Broadsword. Go Heroes!